What is up guys, it is Dragdar here, your favourite Western Israel. I'm back with a different kind of video where I will be analysing and breaking down gameplay from the number one Israel in the world from the Chinese super server. He peaked at 2250 LP. Everyone knows him at this point. His name's Han Kian Lo, or Han Klu for short. And he started playing on the Korean server again for a little bit, although he's decayed recently. He stopped playing. Maybe he's been busy. Um, and he was climbing to get Chal or maybe even rank one. He's done this once before on the Korean server again, and he hit about 1,100 LP um, and then had a bit of a struggle and stopped playing again. So first thing to notice is his build is almost the same every single game. Uh, let's take a look at the rune page first. If you want to switch your brain off and not have to think about runes when playing Ezreal, uh, this is the rune page you can go absolutely every game and you'll be completely fine to play out every single game. Uh, and that is Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Bloodline and Coup de Gras uh, with Inspiration Secondary with Free Boots and Cookies. The only thing that you might want to consider changing is your keystone, and you can switch that between Conqueror or PTA. Um, again, most people see this as just preference, but if you actually wanted some thought behind it, PTA is generally for more aggressive 2v2ing lanes where you're trying to stomp the lane and get a lot of kills out of lane, whereas Conqueror is more of a scaling option. But both work perfectly fine, and you can both you can play aggressive or scaling with either of these two runes. So yeah, this is the go-to rune page. He also opts into Trinity, Mana Moon, Cyrildas almost every single game. Um, this is just the go-to three item powerhouse of a build on Ezreal at the moment. Very, very strong. It's going to disappear in season 14, by the way, guys. It's getting a lot weaker when the Mythic system's getting removed. So definitely you should be abusing this while you can um, in the last month of ranked to get to your desired goals. Um, and other than that, he flexes a bunch of defensive items after his fourth or third item, usually. Uh, a small thing to notice as well, he doesn't really ever change his summoner from heal. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. I think if he's playing in a higher elo bracket, maybe Grandmaster Challenger, he would start flexing it up. But heal is just a default fine summoner to take. But I would highly recommend switching between Cleanse, Exhaust, or TP. Um... In, in scaling matches for TP or exhaust when they have a lot of all in or cleanse if they have a lot of CC. It's, it's quite self explanatory. But anyway, let's get into the gameplay. We're going to analyze how he manufactures a lead in every single game he plays. He always manages to find kills in lane, get aggressive, and uh, snowball the game out of control with two items. So that's what we're going to look at today. Get your notepads out, guys. We're going to do some learning. So let's take a look at the matchup, guys. It is Ezreal Ash versus Vayne Lux. And traditionally, most people might think that Vayne is a direct counter to Ezreal, but it really depends on the support matchup. And in this case, with Ash, they can really, really stomp the Vayne because you have short range. So what you want to do in early game when you have the winning matchup is cheese this bush. Look, you see how he's pinging for the kill really aggressively? He knows this is going to be a 100% win because they have the winning matchup. Really simple here. Just follow up with auto attack, stacking Conqueror. Trade the Vayne down a little bit because she's now 1v2 in the lane. Uh, and really important thing to notice is... They actually have a ward in the river, because if you're looking That's to cheese like this, you might be worried about the jungler early ganking here, because you get quite low in the 2v2. Uh, and if you look at the minimap already, the Graves right. is immediately coming down. So if you want to have ideas of knowing when you should cheese in the bush here and look aggressively, it is if you have the winning 2v2 matchup. And also, you need to ward early in the river so you don't get caught by the jungler. Um, to make sure that this works out. So he just crashes the wave, recalls, he's probably going to get a tier and maybe refillable. Uh, refillable, really, really good in the early game. If you want early sustain, it increases your laning power because you can trade evenly, like 50 HP for 50 HP, and then you get to heal up because obviously the Vayne isn't going to be able to buy anything. She didn't get any gold. Um, so yeah, he's just going to come back into lane now. Han Klu. Sadly, uh, I live in the shadow of this man because he is uh, the best Ezreal in the world. I definitely did take a lot of inspiration from him, though, and figured out how I wanted to manufacture my own playstyle around his gameplay patterns. So there's definitely going to be a lot to learn. As you can see, the wave is coming into him now, and he's stronger. So what he wants to do here is actually freeze this wave in front of his tower. Ideally, he doesn't let it crash. Uh, and force Vayne to stay in the lane. Unfortunately, the wave is a bit too big here, so he's going to have to let the wave crash. And I can hear it in his voice. He's a bit he's a bit frustrated. Um, but there isn't much to do. The wave is too big, so Vayne's going to end up getting a recall, and he's just going to slow push this next wave because he won't be able to crash it in time before the Vayne gets back to lane. See here? He's deciding not to hit the wave. It is because if he decided to try and push this wave in, it would not crash before the Vayne gets back to lane, and he'd be in a really dangerous position. 
So what he's going to do now is he's just going to slow push the wave out, wait for Ash to come back into lane and start bullying again once he's crashed a really, really big wave with his slow push. So there isn't too much else to say here. Notice he's using Heartsteel Ezreal, by the way. This is definitely a pay-to-win skin. It makes the mechanics feel very, very fluid. Uh, and it, it just generally feels very, very good. I'd say this is on the same par as Frosted Ezreal in terms of smoothness when playing with the skin. But anyway, as we can see, look, Kha'Zix is right behind them in the river here. So this is why he didn't immediately push the wave. You see how enemy bot lane has to walk up quite far and Ash is coming from behind. Uh, and remember from the early fight, they lost some sums. So this is going to be an easy cleanup for Han Klu. Uh, Kha'Zix gets the kill and it's fine. He's a snowboarding jungler. That's one thing you'll notice is Han Klu isn't very, very greedy with all of his kills. He'll understand what the win condition in his game is. And if he has a snowballing jungler assassin like Kha'Zix, He'll generously give up a kill or two if he needs to. Uh, and that's what he did in that case. Now, what I want to see from Hanklu is he's going to look for a straight up dive because there's no way she can survive 1v2. Even if Ash dies, this is worth it. Look at this massive wave that this Vayne's just missed. So she got bullied out level one, missed a bunch of minions, and now misses this entire cannon wave. And the important thing to notice about killing the enemy on a dive like this when the wave has crashed is not only does she miss the entire wave, the wave is now going to slow push back into Han Klu again. And what that means is, by the time he recalls and comes back to lane, the wave state is going to be really, really close to his tower, and the Vayne is going to have to walk up again. And so he's now got the kill, the gold lead. He's very, very strong because he has an item advantage, XP advantage from all the CS that she's missed. And now Vayne has to walk up and contest them to crash the wave again. And you'll see exactly what I mean by that um, when it comes up here. He's going to come back to lane. And if you notice, look. The exact same wave state I mentioned before, as it's close to his tower. This is something that happens every single time when you dive someone on a big crash, uh, and they should look to contest, trim the wave here, keep it in front of the tower for as long as they can, and start fighting the vein again. So let's take a look if that's what he's going to do. Look, Ash has the right idea, starting to trade up. But once again, the wave's a bit too big, so he lets it crash, and it's going to be rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Very, very simple gameplay pattern here. Nothing too crazy, but he is really pushing his match up to the limit by playing aggressive when he needs to. Um, and that's something you should always look to do. If you have a winning matchup, you should always try and look to play aggressive on this level one, level two, uh, bush cheese angle, or push the way fast to get level two and look aggressively, because then you can get a lead like this where you force them under the tower to be really low, or even kill them on a dive. Um, and it's basically just rinse and repeat. So as we see, the main's recalled, he's going to crash the wave, start taking plates, bully them under the tower with Qs. Yep, really nice Q under the tower there. Uh, magnetic, if you will, looking for a cheeky one. But now he's just going to keep permanently pushing. And the reason he's deciding to do this is because he is so much stronger than the enemy bot lane now. With such a big item lead and XP lead, notice he's level 5 and Vayne is level 4. Uh, that if the enemy jungler does in fact decide to gank, which by the way, we can already see him topside, which is the bigger reason of why he's doing this. But even if he didn't see Graves, if they decided to gank, they are so much stronger that they could actually decide to even 2v3 the enemy jungler and their bot lane and maybe even win the fight. And this is something that can instantly win you a game is if you recognize you're super, super strong, you recognize a window that you can 2v3, if the jungler ganks you and you manage to outplay it, it's almost like lights out for the enemy. It's almost uh, game ending because you're winning on the side of the map where you should be weak side, you know? Um, really aggressive poking here, and notice how he's just so much stronger than them that he's just, like, you know, completely bullying here. One small little intricate mechanic I want you to notice on this last kill on the Lux here is he actually decides to auto just when his sheen is off cooldown so he can Q at the same time, and so this auto will proc the sheen and just in case she flashes the Q or something, the auto with the Sheen proc will kill her guaranteed. So let's say she had flash and tried to flash this Q, the auto will kill instead. Because if he didn't proc Sheen on that auto, let me show you one more time, it actually wouldn't have killed. So if we look here, his normal auto is dealing 53 damage or 88 damage here. Uh, and you can't see it, but she has 100 and something health. So if he did not proc Sheen on this auto, she wouldn't have died if she decided to flash the Q right. So it's an important thing to keep in mind when people are running away from you and you just about want to kill them. Okay, so now he's really just running away from this, uh, running away with this laning phase. Vayne is recalling again. He has a 20 CS lead, and this all really snowballed out of control from the uh, from the level one. 
where he's playing really aggressive, guys. And I really want to stress this. This is something you should look to do when you have the winning matchup with Ezreal. Every single time, you shouldn't just AFK leash your jungler. You shouldn't be AFK sitting at your tower level one. You should always be looking to get some form of lead immediately. Even if it's just one or two Qs or a light chunk on the enemy and they have to respect you, this is how it can end up if you uh, get away with that. You know, it's really, really important. And remember, this Vayne matchup is supposed to be traditionally quite bad for Ezreal and he's kind of just, you know, rolling all over the board here. Um, and, you know, it has a little bit to do with the support matchup, of course. Ash very, very strong into Vayne. But he's playing it very well. He's punishing where he can. Cheeky little ulti on mid here with the Xerath. No way this kills. Maybe it will. And there we go. We love, love this. Obviously, that looks a bit goofy. But this is an important point to notice. When you're walking out of base with Ezreal, you should always be looking around the map. And in general, not just walking out of base, but also when you can, you should always be looking around the map. You should see where fights are happening as soon as you hit level 6. Because you never know, you could just pick up a random cross-map snipe if someone's like, you know, got their hands off the keyboard recalling and they're not focusing. You could just pick up a quick kill. And that's exactly what he did in mid here. Like, Zarath is just ulting, not thinking about the Ezreal ult. And just like that, one extra freebie. Okay. And now it's a bit of rinse and repeat here. We know he's so much stronger than the enemy bot lane. So instead of just letting the enemy push or letting them come into him, he knows he can play really, really aggressive, force the jungler to come into him and still outplay them anyway. And if they don't gank, he's just going to start farming plates and bullying them under the tower. So that's exactly what we want to see. Just perma pushing. Important thing to keep in mind here is... You might not always be super far ahead enough to get away with this. The mid laner can gank you with the jungler and it'll be a 4v2, as you can see. Um, so you really want to have vision, vision somewhere. And as you can see, he has vision in the river. He decides not to opt into 1v3ing here, but I think he's actually very, very strong. So he could look to play a bit more aggressive. That's what he's looking for here. Ash was just a bit too far out of position. But if Ash was a little bit further back, they could have actually 2 v 2 them, excuse me. <clears throat> but as you can see he doesn't always mindlessly just play aggressive it's a bit of calculated aggression you don't just think to yourself oh i'm ezreal i'm strong i want to try and ego check people outplay everyone i see that's not what you do you want to have calculated aggression you want to account for the jungler your matchup if you have an item advantage if you've landed enough cues see that in that situation he missed one cue and he decided okay I've lost all my cooldown resets because I've missed one Q. I'm just going to back out and not try and 1v3 them. So a lot of people make this mistake of thinking Han Klu uh, plays just non-stop aggressive, always looking forward. But he actually does have a degree of depth when he chooses his fights, you know, and that's an important thing to keep in mind. Enemy bot lane have recalled here, so he's just going to crash the wave and get his Trinity. And this is where you really want to lay it down. If you get an accelerated Trinity spike, you need to keep this in mind. This is Ezreal's strongest, strongest point in the game that you can accelerate into Mana Moon as fast as possible and just completely take over the game. So what we're going to see here now is he is going to start pressuring like crazy, pushing every single wave, seeing if he can land poke on the enemies under the tower, trying to 2v3 when the jungler comes. I promise you it's going to look like a complete massacre here. Um, he's not going to play safe or anything like that. And he's going to just take plates, maybe even take the turret immediately uh, and rotate his lead around the map. And this is how you take agency as an AD carry. It's what you want to do is you really, really want to push your lead fast enough to take the tower and then rotate into another lane before the platings have gone down at 14 minutes and just start taking over the map. Uh, and that's how most AD carries think, oh, but I win my lane and then I lose the game. It's because you're not transferring your lead. And that's what I'd like to see Hanklu do. So in this situation, Ash is not bot lane right now. So he's playing it a bit safe because um, he's letting his team fight in the river. But now he knows they've killed the enemy jungler. He can play as aggressive as he wants. So look, he's going to look for an E forward here. Absolutely. Decides not to. Playing a bit safe. And look at this damage. This is Trinity Spike when you're accelerated. Just almost instantly solo kills him here. What I want you to notice again... And this is how important the mechanic is to keep in mind that I was talking about earlier. He does the exact same Sheen proc mechanic with the Lux here again. So even though she's shielded, this one auto attack would not normally kill. But he fires his Q the exact moment that the auto attack is just about to land. You see the Trinity Force goes on cooldown. So that auto attack procced Trinity Force and just one shot the Lux without the Q even landing. So Lux didn't think to flash it. She didn't think she would die to that auto attack. And I promise you, in every elo from Bronze to Grandmaster to Challenger... I forgot about iron, my bad. This always works. So please, please keep this in mind when last hit kills. And you can see just how OP it is getting Trinity um, ahead of the curve. 
Really nice ult from Ash here, by the way. That was a very good arrow. And he's just going to take full tower here, reset, and then rotate around the map, like I said, to transfer his lead. Um, normally, what you should do here is you should take over the mid lane as Ezreal. Unless it's a really big, bad matchup for your top laner, then you can take over top uh, and start playing to take top plates. The most important thing you want to keep in mind when rotating is, one, you should communicate in advance to your solo laners, and two, you should make sure your jungler and your support are on the same page as you. You want them to be playing around you. You don't want to be playing all the way up in top tower or really aggressive in mid. You have no one around you, and then suddenly you get collapsed on and just die and throw away your whole lead. Any deaths in the mid game on Ezreal is way, way more punishing than any other AD carry because he doesn't traditionally scale into the late game like all of the other crit AD carries do. If you fall behind or give one death, it might feel really bad that you played so well and you only died once and then suddenly the game becomes hard. But this is the nature of Ezreal. He's a real skill checking champion. And as you can see, he's come into the mid lane now. His mid laner has understood the assignment really, really nice and gone into the bot lane. A lot of people ask me, what should you do if your solo laner doesn't rotate? And what you should do in a situation like that is, well, first of all, you want to ping and communicate quite clearly. A lot of the time I even chat if I need to, like I type in chat, you know, obviously you want to be a bit of a babysitter about it because people will have very fragile mentals and you don't want them to lose their mind. So I'd say something like, uh, you know, can win the game if I rotate top here. Something small like that when you're in base. And usually, more often than not, people think this isn't the case. They will re rotate for you because they understand you're going to win the game. But if they don't, worst case scenario, just walk back bot lane and collect your farm. You don't want to be missing any resources on the map. That's the most, most important thing. Rule number one, as an AD carry, you don't want to be missing any resources. So if they don't rotate, just walk back to bot lane, catch your wave. And then as soon as you push the wave high, because you're fed enough to you know, crash under the inner tower, you can rotate into mid and help your team and then, you know, rinse and repeat, come back to bot lane, catch the wave, go back into mid, something like that, you know? Okay, but in this case, the rumble has rotated and I'd like to see him taking mid prio, playing really aggressive on mid because he's so fed right now. He can just completely Goomba stomp this game with how fed he is. Um, and either what he's going to do is start hitting plates or he's going to rotate into an objective. Against Zerath, it actually can be quite difficult. Um, because he actually outranges Ezreal, and this is a big worry when playing against artillery mages like Vayne, uh, Vayne, Zoe, Jace, Zerath, these kinds of champions that outrange you. It can make it quite hard for you to push your lead, so I wouldn't be surprised if I start seeing him uh, rotate away from mid into an objective. But he's landed a decent amount of poke onto the Zerath here that he has to respect. The Zerath also, fortunately, has to respect the Ash arrow engage, which is quite convenient. Lux getting caught here, not good, lands one more poke, and this is really, really nice, because now the Zarath is low, he can still pressure, even though um, it's a bad matchup from on mid. An important thing I want you to notice here is, look at his positioning, look at his forward positioning here. He's standing like he's on the enemy's team, he's like standing all the way up at their tower, and this is how oppressive and aggressive you want to be when you're accelerated on Ezreal, because this is a common mistake that most Ezreals that I teach and I coach, they always come to me, but Dragdar, I got so fed from laning phase and then suddenly everyone kept dying everywhere and I just couldn't carry the game and we lost in the mid game and I was like 20 and 0, but we lost the game because we got outscaled. It's because you really, really want to push your lead in the mid game. I can't stress this enough. This is where Ezreal's highest win percentage is about 20 to 25 minutes is when he has his highest win rate and past 30 minutes is when his win rate drops off really, really low and it just gets lower and lower as the game goes on. So you want to be playing really aggressive like this standing up in their face a bit cocky and it can be scary but again this is the nature of Ezreal he's a champion where you have to be very very skilled understand your damage thresholds really really well and um, play aggressive so and you know it's fun so why wouldn't you want to do that right as you can see he's not getting much done on mid here I would like to see him rotate into dragon this is one thing that I think is a mistake that he's doing right now is there's no harm on these waves when he can't pressure and he's taken the prior that he can't just walk into the dragon take this for free because he has such aggressive prior he has control of bot lane it's just a free dragon to take and he's not going to miss anything so I think it's a bit of a mistake to not go dragon here but what I think is happening in his mind is he's on a master smurf he doesn't really care that much uh, and he just wants to play aggressive and mechanics check people Nice little Herald coming out from Kha'Zix here. So he's going to get a decent amount of gold for free here. Still going to be very difficult to take the turret, even with Herald. Um, and this is just the nature of playing Ezreal into an artillery mage like Zerath. He's landing some nice Qs though, so maybe Zerath is going to have to respect eventually. But yeah, here you go. Look at this. 
Ezreal, so fed. 4-0-3, 5 plates on bot lane, 3 plates on mid lane. But because he's playing into a bad matchup on mid against Zerath, Lux, who actually outrange him, it feels like it's kind of hard for him to play. It feels like there isn't much for him to do, which is why I think it's a bad decision for him to keep playing aggressive here. But this is Hanklo, this is what he likes to do. Um, and again, he's on an account that he doesn't really care too much about, so... <laughs> a bit like bullet hell there. Really good clicks. Only got hit by one or two there, so really, really nice that he survives. But it's still bad because you don't want your most fed member to have to be playing on the back end like this. You really want them to be playing aggressive and pushing their lead. I think it's uh, a bit wild that he's deciding to stay here, but they don't really have any more abilities left for him. The Zerath actually has very, very good aim, to be honest. I'm surprised he managed to dodge all the ultis. Very well played. Maybe this is just a, a Chinese super server culture thing. This isn't the Korean server, by the way. But maybe they just don't like taking dragons because they permanently fight. They're permanently looking for a, for kills and skill checking each other. But he's just going to take a recall here and get two items. Okay. So now he's at two items in 13 minutes. 14 now. And this is like the most accelerated you can ever get before they FF in 20 minutes. If you're any more fed than this, it's probably going to be that the enemy's FF in 20 minutes. So I'd really like to start seeing him just really just lay it down, rotating into any lane after taking prior, looking for fights, skirmishes, anywhere, playing really cocky. Um, and it looks like he's moving into a river fight already here. I don't think there's much for him to look for, but look, you see how he's, he's like got bloodlust. He was thinking about eating over the wall. That's the kind of mindset you want to have if you're this accelerated with two items. Because again, you're going to get outscaled. So it's important to push your lead. Unfortunately, he's still having to face the Zerath. Um, and also, there's a Jace on the other side as well. So it's not that much better if he rotates into top. Still no dragon taken. So this is one critique we can take away from Han Klu and how he's playing now. Is he just refuses to take the dragon. Imagine he took this dragon two minutes earlier when he was already in mid and had a chance to. That's two minutes sooner that the soul point dragon is going to spawn and he could have soul as a win condition completely in this game and getting outscaled wouldn't be a worry you know what i mean so it's a bit of a mistake that he's deciding not to do so but again he's probably just on an account that he doesn't care about too much and just chill playing you know he's not playing perfect macro um, but this is the correct decision to make in this case i would like to see him e forward here yep really really nice chunk good movement here What's really underrated about Trinity Force is the amount of movement speed you get every single time you hit them with autos. The passive movement speed you get is so, so useful in skirmishes for dodging abilities. Um, as you can see, he has uh, 383 movement speed here every time he lands a Q, and it's just so easy for him to dodge every single skill right here, even with tier 1 boots. So you should really use that to advantage. Play a bit cocky when you have Trinity Force. See how much you can get away with um, with your movement speed. It's definitely something that I really like doing. It's kind of playing in their face, testing them, you know, dodging their abilities without using my E. Um, Mr. Cannon there, minus one. And finally, he gets to get the mid turret because he's rewarded for the poke he got off on the Zerath here. Um, and what he's going to start doing now is the tower is taken. And that means you can take the wave even higher. So I want to start seeing him take the mid waves literally at where their outer turret has been taken all the way up on mid and then again start rotating into the sides because there isn't too much for him to do on mid now um so we're gonna see this look he's gonna take a kill here and finally about five minutes later they get the dragon they could have this could have been the third dragon being taken but it's fine it's okay um yeah so now he's gonna take the midways really really high start looking for fights if your team decides to fight with you in mid this is really really beneficial but a lot of people don't understand this about israel there we go, he's hunting them down, lands three Qs in a row, really nice, four Qs in a row, E forward, auto, really simple mechanics, nothing too fancy here, they're just running away from him in a straight line. Um, but yeah, they get a fight on mid, get two picks really, really easily like that, and he's already pinging to take the mid tower. Lux, as you can see from the laning phase, has died so many times that this guy isn't even a champion anymore, um, and the game is just snowballing out of control right now. And this is really from him playing as aggressive as he should be with his two on the spike. Taking Herald into mid inner, into mid inhib turret at 17 minutes. This is how fast the Chinese Super Server games can play. Like, you can just, in the snap of a, a moment, lose the game, you know? And that's exactly what's happening here. I would actually prefer if they don't take this inhib, but they could use the pressure from mid inhib to take everything on sides because they don't actually have that much wave clear on the enemy team. It's a vein, it's a graves early game. It's not really easy for them to clear the super minions that easily, so. Lux just blind face checking here. A bit of an int from the Lux. I'm not sure what that guy's doing. I think they're just a bit tilted running it down. Landing every single Q though. Um, and I would say this is partly a testament to the heart steel skin. It's so nice landing Qs with the skin. Looking aggressive. Going to flash this Q because he doesn't want to get low. 
Uh, and this is just a team fighting idea that I want to make clear to you. Look how slow he's playing this fight. Playing range, playing with Qs. He's not he's not over aggressively looking for auto attacks here until it's a guaranteed play. And let's just quickly watch that fight back again one more time. Watch how he's playing really far back. He knows Jace is over the wall here, so he's not going to overcommit to hit the Graves, even if he could kill him. Playing far back, letting his team be the front line, take all the priority abilities. Again, kiting back, kiting back, landing Qs here. He does go for an E forward here, but that's only because he knows all of the enemies are on the bot side of this wall. But he immediately starts to kite. And he could probably survive if he tanks this Q, but he knows he doesn't even want to get low, because if he gets low, he's going to have to immediately exit this fight, and it might end up resulting in his team getting wiped. So he decides to prioritize HP, flash the Q, kill the Jace who's overcommit on him, and then he can play the rest of the fight very patiently, very slow, if they decide to chase. So he gets a freebie on this guy here. And notice, look, he's not even walking for all attacks here. Even though his rumble is going forward, he's waiting, letting the rumble take the key priority abilities and playing as a bit of a main character, letting his team take all the key abilities and then playing slow, landing cues, and then only committing when it's a guaranteed play. Lands a Q on Graves here, 1 HP, Vayne can't fight anymore. And it looks like he's 1v9, it's like magical. Like how did he just clean up this team fight all on his own? And it is a little bit of main character syndrome. He's letting his team tank all the key abilities and then only going in when it's basically a free cleanup room. You still have to be very accurate from your, with your cues, but this is exactly the mentality you want to have when playing not just Ezreal, but AD carry in general. Because you don't want to have to use your key abilities to dodge really simple skills that are coming your way. If you can let your team tank him for you, um, that's definitely the best way to go. It can be a bit greedy, but this is solo queue. You should be playing greedy, you should be playing for yourself. Uh, the only consistent factor in every game you play is yourself, of course. So you should be the one trying to carry games. Um, but yeah, he's so fed now. He's opting for the more here because the only champion. You might think this is a bit weird. But they have Jace, Graves, and and Vayne. Why, why would he ever go more? You're probably thinking to yourself. Um, and it, it can be a bit strange. I don't think I would go for more here personally myself. I would actually go for Shojin because it's just such an OP item when you don't need Serelda's and they're all kind of squishy because the amount of haste you get is just absurd um, as well as getting a lot of HP which gives you effective health from both damage types, AP and AD. But he's going for more here because in his mind he's thinking the only champions that can realistically get onto me and hurt me are the Lux and the Xerath. As we saw in mid lane when he was getting heavily poked, it wasn't Graves, it wasn't Vayne, they can't get in rage, he's going to space them really easily. It's just the Lux and the Xerath. I do think Jace can be quite dangerous for him. He's definitely a bad champion to have to deal with when you're playing Israel. But he's recognized that the Jace has never really been in this fight and so he just wants to survive the Lux Xerath combo. So that's why he's gone for the more here. You might be thinking, Dragged it. Why, why is he buying more? That's so strange, you know? Um, but yeah, so they've taken the inner mid turret. There is no Nash spawning because it's only 18 minutes. And Dragon is spawning on bot side of the map. So what does Hanklu do? He sees his rumble in mid. He doesn't want to drop any resources. So instead of just AFK walking to mid, he's walking bot. Why? because there's an inner turret to take, so he's going to accelerate the game. There's a dragon to take, so if he takes bot prior and they have mid prior, then it's a really easy dragon to take. And also, the most important thing, he doesn't want to lose any resources. If Rumble's already taking mid wave, there's no reason for him to go there. Why is he going mid wave? Hopefully the Kha'Zix doesn't take his, his CS, but it looks like he is anyway. Life of an AD carry, it's fine. He's going to start pressuring the side tower. And remember, everything he's doing here is not just to farm kills, it's good macro to actually accelerate the game to a win. You don't want to just sit there, fed out your ass, looking for fights over and over again. You want to make sure these fights and kills actually lead to objectives being taken. And notice how his team is fighting all the way up here and he's not getting like dragged into this silly play. He's deciding to prioritize the tower. You see how much he was playing to hit the tower here? Really nice sidestep on the binding flash. Look at these, look at these moves. Oh my goodness. Let's watch that again. I need some Michael Jackson smooth criminal playing in the background while I'm watching this. One, two, three. Oh, oh, so clean, so crisp. And a lot of this has to do with the Trinity Force movement speed again. Um, he's definitely ego checking a little bit here. I think it's safer for him to back off. And if you're not like infinitely mechanically better than the players in the game that you're playing, you should probably play it safer than this. But, you know, he's in a master smurf while being a rank one player on the Chinese super server. He can get away with this. Look how he's playing super far back. He doesn't want to get randomly sniped by a Xerath Q or a Jace Q. <laughs> As I say that, he just decides to eat forward. Um, but yeah, he really wants to get this tower because it's so much gold in the new patch. Look at this. Even shared among three people. Three people on the local gold. He gets 250 gold for a side tower. Guys, getting 
inner side towers is worth more than any kills you could ever get. It's so much gold. If he got solo gold here, it'd be about 700 gold. They buffed it recently on the recent patch. So if you have an opportunity to take side towers, you absolutely should do. You see, he's just snowballing out of control. He's looking for an E forward here. Paid off the slow from the ash. He's going to look for an ulti from fog. Notice how he walks out of fog. So it's harder for the enemies to dodge the ulti here. Very important. Lands one on the vein. Really, really nice. Gets a freebie. I think I saw Jace TPing somewhere. Yeah, there we go. We see him in the bush. Look how far away he's playing. Most players here might think, oh, he's just TPing in. And I could land a Q or I could maybe go for a W or a Q and then, and then E away. He just Qs once and plays it safe. Immediately E's away because he doesn't know if his Jace has flash or anything like that. And as I told you, his mindset right now is any death as Ezreal in the mid late game is really, really bad for you. He has a 700 bounty shutdown. He does not want to give this away. And that's exactly what he's thinking in the mid late game now is I'm going to play as safe as I can while still playing aggressive and dealing damage. Look at his spacing. Never going for auto attacks here. Only one when his uh, two champions have died and he's playing around the TP, which means they have to run. Uh, so, But he's still playing for Qs. E forward here on the W. Gets a freebie when all the enemies have run away. But again, it's the same philosophy about team fighting. Notice how his teammates are just taking the brunt of all of the key abilities. And he's just sitting back. Look, two of his teammates just all the way walking forward. But he knows if he commits here, the Graves is going to come around and kill him. And he doesn't care. He's, he's playing selfish. He's thinking, okay, I could get a kill and help my team here, but I don't want to die. So I'm going to back off here, playing really, really far back, letting his team pick it all. Plays around the TP, Q, W, E forward into auto. Really nice kill. And then again, Zed going forward, he's not doing too much, just cleans it up with a cheeky little Q here, snag this one, even though he's dead anyway. Notice the Zerath is queuing away, some nice Qs landing here. Whoa! I think Zerath is griefing a little bit here, but this is still a bit of a... He was feeling it, you know? Sometimes you get in the flow state with Ezreal and you start landing them in a row, and this is definitely what he felt here. Bye -bye. Just nailed him. Even says bye-bye, he's feeling it. 11-0-6, completely playing aggressive here. And... Honestly, pretty much at this point, the game is really over. There isn't too much you can do. It's honestly, you need to have a stroke mid game if you want to be able to throw a game like this when you're this far ahead as Ezreal. But it is possible. It is possible. And I've done it many times on my stream. If you watch my stream, because I like to pay for the montage. I'm not really playing for the wins too much. Um, and you can lose a game from this state quite easily. If you just randomly die and give a 1k bounty to Vayne, her on two, three items, even if you are four items, can absolutely out team fight you. So Han Klu, he always decides to play stable. Notice, again, his macro decision making. There's nothing to take in mid, there's nothing to take in bot. So I'm now just going to run top and take everything I can. If I can get the top inner turret, that's another fatty amount of gold. So look, instantly rotate into top, take top tower. No dilly dally, no wasting time, no just randomly walking around the map and like taking bot camps or trying to stop Jace from pushing. He's just taking everything on the map. And this is what you need to do when you're the Fed member. You need to be the one pulling your team around uh, and actually making calls, you know? Uh, notice here, this is a small thing that I want to point out. Most people would ask me, but Dragdar, why is he not going to drag it? That's an objective, right? And it's because he's recognized this game is going to end before the soul dragon gets taken in the first place because if he takes this one it's another five minutes to go until the soul point spawns for mountain soul and he doesn't really care about that that's not a win condition because does he really want to wait another six minutes for this game to end if he's strong enough he can just end the game without having to worry about it so instead of worrying about the dragon he recognizes okay if we just end through top right now which looks like what's happening that's getting wiped off the map um it's just a free game and just like that he played aggressive in the level one snowballed the lead through his good matchup accounted for the jungler and never died to a gank because he had the wards in lane uh, and this is how you want to play Ezreal really aggressive but really really calculated at the same time uh, there's team fight ideas to focus on a lot for you to take away and incorporate into your own games uh, and this is how I actually became very regular at my Ezreal myself as I studied his games to a T and I thought there's a lot of the things you would notice in this game or sorry wouldn't notice in this game if I didn't have the depth insight to share with you uh, I hope you enjoyed that kind of video if you want to see more things like this where I analyze Hanklu's gameplay or any other great Ezreal or my own gameplay and my decision making uh, do let me know please if you enjoyed the video and you stay to the end you're a real one give me a like subscribe so we can juice the algorithm and maybe get this content out to a wider audience so thank you everybody for watching and I hope that proved useful for you peace